From Weatherford, we are back for our post-game wrap on Midwest Sports Saturday on a Thursday because, well, that's just how we roll around here at MidwestSports.net. I'm Joey McWilliams. I'm joined by Casey Freeman tonight, the quarterback of the winning Southwestern Bulldogs. Southwestern coming away with a victory tonight over Arkansas Monticello, 49-35 the final. And Casey, just an all-around good night. Let's go to the bottom line really quickly, and we'll work our way back from there. Seven touchdown passes tonight, all seven scores coming by way of your arm. A couple of different ways to get into your arm, no no doubt about that, and that includes the very first touchdown pass, and all of them from coming outside the red zone or coming from outside the red zone as well. You were just able to find people tonight. Absolutely, yeah. No, our guys did a, did a really good job of getting open. The uh, O-line gave me some time back there, and, and we were clicking tonight. Well, I talk about that first touchdown pass, and uh, Monticello gets the ball first. Uh, defense holds. You, you guys uh, find the way to uh, to get in there and or actually, uh, yeah, to, to get the ball back. Mm -hmm. Your first play from scrimmage, you lose 12 yards, 14 yards. Basically, all that did was give you a little bit more room to work because the very second play in the Chet Pobolish area is a double reverse. They get it right back to you, and, and you throw a 46-yard touchdown pass. Yeah, no, that kind of worked out to our favor of us losing, losing a couple a couple yards and giving, <laughs> giving me a couple more room to, to throw it deep. So, yeah. So it's it's it actually this is great it's 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 scored as a 34 yard touchdown drive that's capped off by a 46 yard touchdown pass so you don't see that all the time it's one of those weird baseball scores all right uh, touchdown passes tonight of 46 yards 43 67 36 47 39 and 22 to five different receivers that found their way into the end zone tonight. You talk about what the line did. Uh, they really provided some protection for you as well, but you were able to, to mix things up and find different receivers. Absolutely. No, our, our line, we, we, they started off, you know, started the game really good, and we, we battled through, throughout the game, and then our receivers are unbelievable. They're solid across. We have ten guys that can go, and I believe any of them can do, can, can make plays, and, and you saw that uh, tonight. The, the game had its ebbs and flows. Uh, there, there was a point in time, it seemed like that uh, just a quick pace, lots of points on the board, and that was the general consensus earlier today that it would be a high-scoring game, 49 to 35, 84 points on the board when all is said and done. So if you had 80 at the over-under and you took under, sorry about that, uh, they, they, they scored a little bit more than that. But you found a way to get past some of those ebbs in there. You're trailing 21-14 and then rattle off 21 consecutive points. Yeah, that fumble right there kind of kind of made me mad. I told the O line that's on me, and we'll get we'll get it back. And our defense, you know, they played they played a, played a good ball game. You know, the score might not show that, but I really think our defense played a really good good ball game. All right, so Casey Freeman, uh, seven touchdown passes tonight, uh, with 416 yards passing, 18 of 26 completions, and no interceptions. Sir. That's a good way to start the season. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, Casey Freeman, the quarterback, starting quarterback and winning quarterback tonight for the Southwestern Bulldogs, and success to you all as you all go on the road next week to take on Washita. We'll look at now at some other scores from around Division Two tonight as here on Midwest Sports Saturday. We want to keep you up to speed on what's happening from Division One. Let's start there. Oklahoma State uh, getting a little bit of a fight from Missouri State tonight, 45-17. And that is a late third quarter score. So the Cowboys on top in Division One play. Let's look down Division Two right now and some finals from Magnolia, Arkansas. Southern Arkansas, 38 nothing over Arkansas Tech. That's the number four team in the Midwest Sports.net regional rankings. 38 nothing over Arkansas Tech. Southern Arkansas, by the way, will be at number three, Harding, next week in Searcy for a big Week 2 matchup. The final from Pittsburgh as Pitt State defeats Central Oklahoma 21-7. Pitt State, the number six team in the Midwest Sports.net regional ranking, Central Oklahoma number seven. A final from Alva as Northwestern defeats Washita 29-21. Final from Durant, Oklahoma. Southeastern blanks Southern Nazarene 35-0 is the score there. Of course, our 49-35 final score here in Weatherford tonight. A final from Rolla, Missouri. Missouri S&T over Eastern New Mexico 31-14. It was Michigan T Tech on the road at Truman State tonight. 20-10 the final there. And Winona State 
travels to Wayne State, comes away with a 41-28 victory and a final there. Now some scores late in the contest, fourth quarter scores here. The number one team, according to the MidwestSports.net regional rankings, Fort Hayes State, battling at home and trailing number five Central Missouri, 16-6. That is a fourth quarter score late in the fourth quarter. Number two, Northwest Missouri over Missouri Western, 28-6. That is a fourth quarter score as well. In the third quarter, Emporia State all over Northeastern State, 34-7. And a fourth quarter score from Kearney, Nebraska. Nebraska Kearney, the Lopers, shutting out Missouri Southern, 45 nothing, And that is late in the fourth quarter. It is Washburn at Lindenwood tonight, 27-14, as the Ichabods lead late in the fourth quarter. And this one close, it was... Uh, Late in the fourth quarter, down to about a minute remaining in Ada, Oklahoma tonight. Oklahoma Baptist and East Central tied at 20. And we uh, will get the scores for you on our MidwestSports.net website a little bit later on. So those are updated scores. And quickly, as we wrap things up here from Weatherford, looking at games from around the NAIA and lots more games to play this weekend, let's look at some of the top teams and the schedule here for our MidwestSports.net regional rankings from the NAI. Morningside will not play this week. Had his first game of the season. The Mustangs defeated William Penn 49-21 on August 25th. They're idle this week. Northwestern Iowa at Valley City State, the number two team. Northwestern Iowa in the MidwestSports.net regional ranking. Number three, Langston opens its season next week versus Ottawa of Arizona, a new program out of uh, Arizona there, so Ottawa, the Spirit, opening against Langston next week. Number four, Baker at William Penn. Number five, Benedictine at Missouri Valley. It is Oklahoma Panhandle, the number six team in the MidwestSports.net regional rankings, hosting Hastings, a cross-conference match there, a little regional matchup. Number seven, Grandview at Evangel. Number eight, Avila at, or excuse me, number eight, Sterling, hosting Avila. Number nine, Tabor will be at St. Mary and number 10, Kansas Wesleyan on the road at Texas Wesleyan. So that is our wrap tonight from Weatherford. I want to say thanks to the sports information director here at Southwestern, Doug Sell, for all of the help and all of the crew here for making us feel welcome here in Weatherford and taking care of everything that we needed to get done. Thanks again also to Haley Tucker for her work, <coughs> excuse me, for her work this afternoon. And we are very grateful to be here. So we're thankful. <coughs> Sounds like that. I think I'm just about out of gas vocally, so I'm going to need to wrap things up here again. Uh, for Dylan Perry, I'm Joey McWilliams. Be sure and catch us next Saturday, Midwest Sports Saturday, on the road from Searcy, Arkansas. Thanks for watching tonight. God bless you, everybody, and have a great one.